a Chinese police post in the center of New York City, lawmakers push back. China's zero COVID-19 policy, described as sustainable by the nation's state mouthpiece, is the policy here to stay. And the same policy getting put to the test. Highly contagious subvariants of Omicron now appearing across China. Suppression of Christianity in China. The Chinese Communist Party taking aim at the faith in a new way. And a look at undersea cables. The information superhighways transporting signals from other continents to our phones and TVs. But could China cut them off if war broke out? An expert breaks it down. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The Chinese Communist Party's long arm appears to be reaching further into the United States. A Chinese police station has been spotted right in the heart of New York City. It's one of more than 100 similar law enforcement offices the CCP has set up worldwide. Its presence was greeted with outrage from U.S. lawmakers on Friday. They wrote to U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland and Secretary of State Antony Blinken, saying there should be no room for the CCP to exercise law enforcement on U.S. soil. What's more, according to the New York Post, a U.S. charity is reportedly behind the Manhattan-based CCP Police Division, and that charity is blacklisted by the Internal Revenue Service. The police outpost is called Fuzhou Police Overseas Service Station. It's located inside the headquarters of the American Chengli Association, or ACA, a nonprofit. The IRS revoked the ACA's tax exempt status in May after three years of failing to file. According to the ACA's website, the nonprofit provides what it calls a social gathering place for Chinese nationals. But some of the photos on its website seem to suggest close ties with the communist regime. Among the photos is a certificate of appreciation from the Chinese consulate in New York for its support of the CCP. Earlier this year, the ACA cooperated with the CCP's police bureau to set up the so-called police service station in New York. The program allegedly helped Chinese nationals renew their identification cards and driver licenses during the pandemic. But some say these overseas policing offices serve more sinister purposes. According to human rights-focused NGO Safeguard Defenders, these stations spy on overseas dissenters and detain or forcibly return them to China. The organization reports that between April 2021 and July 2022, more than 200,000 overseas nationals were forcibly returned to China. A spokeswoman for Safeguard Defenders described the overseas stations as illegal under international law. She told Fox News that she thinks it shows how brazen the CCP is getting and how little regard they have for other governments. The American Changli Association and New York City government have not responded to our inquiries about the police station by airtime. These overseas Chinese police stations aren't limited to New York City. In Dublin, Ireland, newspaper The Irish Times caught another one on camera. A sign outside the building reads, Fuzhou Overseas Police Service Station. Fuzhou is a city in southern China. Authorities there say they've opened 30 police services stations in 21 countries. Other Chinese cities also operate their own stations. The newspaper reported that the Irish government is reaching out to the Chinese embassy for answers and that discussions are ongoing. An update on the pandemic in China. The Chinese Communist Party's flagship newspaper says China must stick to its zero COVID-19 policy, a strategy marked by citywide lockdowns, enforced quarantine and frequent virus testing. The commentary dashes hopes that China will loosen its restrictions anytime soon. The newspaper, The People's Daily, said Tuesday that China's strict measures are sustainable. That's despite the blows it has dealt to the nation's economy and other disruptions to daily life, like shortages of food and medical care. In some cases, people have been confined to their homes for months. China is one of the few countries still resorting to harsh anti-COVID-19 measures. Beijing appears particularly concerned now, imposing fresh lockdowns and travel restrictions. 
Officials are likely trying to present a positive image before a major Communist Party meeting that starts Sunday. Yet despite its efforts, China on Monday reported its highest number of confirmed cases since August. Two highly transmissible Omicron subvariants have been detected in China, and the discovery is putting the country's zero COVID-19 policy to the test. One of the subvariants is called BA.517. It appeared in China for the first time over the weekend. It stems from the BA.5 variant, the strain responsible for the majority of current infections in the U.S. and U.K. It's the most transmissible COVID-19 variant so far. The other new subvariant is called BF7. It's already been detected in several Chinese cities, including southern technology hub Shenzhen, dubbed China Silicon Valley. This only days after the variant was first identified in northern China. As the U.S. and most of the other countries coexist with the virus in low numbers, Beijing still abides by its strict zero COVID-19 policy. The harsh measures have wreaked havoc on its economy and people. And as new variants become more transmissible, it's getting harder for Beijing to keep it in place. Besides those new variants, China saw its number of new daily cases triple in the first week of October. It's a special week in China, marking the week-long National Day holiday. The situation prompted fresh lockdowns and travel restrictions across the country. Both Shanghai and the capital Beijing have renewed their restrictions. According to local reports, Shanghai has designated 34 districts as posing high to medium risk of infection as of Monday. Residents in these areas are either banned from leaving their homes or their residential compounds. That comes after a prolonged lockdown earlier this year. On Monday, three Shanghai districts announced that movie theaters and other entertainment venues would close. Authorities are also ramping up virus testing. All residents in all districts will be tested twice weekly from Monday until early November. Given the news, Shanghai residents have started stockpiling food and cleaning out store shelves. Over in Beijing, authorities now require a negative test result within three days for entry into parks, office buildings and shops. That's after at least 10 districts in Beijing have reported new infections. Videos online show Beijing authorities sealing certain residential compounds with iron bars on Monday. Some shops there have also been fenced off. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is sending a series of messages to Chinese citizens on YouTube, and it's sparking reactions from Beijing. Here's a closer look at how the Chinese embassy in Washington is stepping in. How does Beijing paint the U.S. inside China? Here's a snippet of some clips from the evening news program aired by China's state broadcaster. But former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has a different take on it. The some of the longest waiting lines for visas anywhere in the world to come to the United States where our consulates in China. Countless Chinese people want to visit, want to study, or even to immigrate here. This video is part of a series from Pompeo, directed at the Chinese people. The video description says, in the series, Pompeo speaks directly to the Chinese people about the Communist Party and U.S.-China relations. In it, he notes that today, the U.S. is home to people of all races, including more than a million Chinese Americans. They contribute immeasurably to our way of life and to America's experiment in self-government. He says the U.S. attracts more immigrants than any other country in the world. And that includes victims of the CCP's genocide in China, including Uyghurs and Tibetans. CCP is short for the Chinese Communist Party. Americans call out discrimination abroad when we see it, particularly in Beijing's systemic racism in Xinjiang, Tibet. Inner Mongolia and elsewhere. Pompeo says there's one thing that the CCP doesn't want Chinese people to know. Is that the most anti-Chinese force in history is the CCP. It was founded on a bankrupt Marxist ideology that killed tens of millions of Chinese people, launched a cultural revolution 
that destroyed thousands of years of Chinese culture and can't admit that any of it was more than a mistake. It was a crime. Pompeo says he looks forward to the day that Chinese people will be able to participate in fights for freedom that Americans have had since 1776, and that Chinese people deserve far better. Pompeo's message also caught Beijing's attention. The Chinese embassy in Washington sent the Hudson Institute a letter expressing concerns about what it called the groundless accusations Pompeo made against the Communist Party of China. The letter added that any attempts to cut off the blood ties between CPC, Chinese Communist Party, and the Chinese people are doomed to fail. Posting a photo of the letter on Twitter, Pompeo wrote that the CCP wants him to stop speaking the truth, adding that it, quote, ain't gonna happen. Next, we'd like to take a minute to answer a question sent in by our audience. It has to do with the situation Christianity is facing in China. Christians have long faced persecution under the Chinese communist regime. But now, rather than merely repressing the religion, Beijing now wants to transform it. Global Persecution Watchdog, the Voice of the Martyrs, recently revealed a report saying the Chinese Communist Party is rewriting the Bible through a communist lens. It's a mission the CCP has been reportedly working on since at least 2019. It's led to what have been called shocking distortions in the scripture, including a version where Jesus describes himself as a sinner. A high school textbook released in 2020 revealed the change. The party changed several verses in the Bible in which Jesus forgives an adulterous woman despite the crowd's calls to stone her. But in the CCP's version, Jesus stoned the woman himself and said, quote, I am also a sinner. On top of that, the organization also pointed out that the communist revisions of the Bible will include, quote, core socialist values and removal of passages that do not reflect communist beliefs. A spokesman for the Voice of the Martyrs, Todd Nettleton, told CBN News that the alterations directly take aim at Jesus' divinity. The issue for the Chinese Communist Party is control. He believes the revisions highlight an attempt by the CCP to lessen Christianity's influence in China. But he says he hopes it will backfire and prompt the Chinese people to begin questioning its motivations. Why was it so important for them to change this? Despite the fact that China technically allows Christianity, the CCP only allows a version of Christianity remade in its image. Chinese Christians who refuse to bend to the Communist Party's agenda are under growing pressure, and their open expression of faith is becoming more risky inside China. Issues with the Nord Stream pipelines are drawing attention to the bottom of our oceans. But under the waves, it's not just fuel pipelines that are critical to our everyday lives. Undersea cables spanning half a million miles transport signals from other continents to our phones and TVs at home. We sat down with Greg Copley, president of International Strategic Studies Association, to find out more. Gregory, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Wonderful to be back with you, Tiffany. So recently in the headlines is the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage. It seems we still don't know who was behind it, but what does that attack show us about how important these undersea cables are? Well, undersea cables are literally crossing no man's land. If you think of the reality of, of human history throughout the millennia and even today, there's no such thing as international law. There's only your ability to project your power and to defend your assets. And undersea cables are really projections of, of national capabilities and the like. And they've become far more uh, pervasive and important since 1850 when we saw the first transatlantic cable going in, for example. And now you've got, uh, you know, four or five hundred uh, major uh, undersea cables and and uh, and not to mention the pipelines going around the world. So what we saw with the uh, sabotage with both Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 pipelines was something which was in incredibly important. What we see is that uh, the the oceans remain the critical area for the world's strategic power projection and defenses. 99% of all uh, communications around the world, for example, go via submarine cables. 
there's this tendency to believe that we are now reliant solely on satellites for communications. But 1% of the global communications traffic goes via satellites. So satellites are different, uh, have different values uh, for surveillance and for uh, global positioning and other things. And certainly they, they play a role in, in communications and as backups for submarine cables. But if you look at the disruption which the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines caused and think and extrapolate that into what damage might be done to the world's uh, power projection and economic capabilities if submarine cables were intercepted. That's far more important than intercepting satellites in space for the most part. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what to look out for in our second half. A closer look at undersea cables, the information superhighway is hidden beneath the waves. Is China controlling some of the critical cables? And could Beijing cut us off from them if it invaded Taiwan? In the second half of our interview, Greg Copley breaks it down. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. Shen Yun Creations, the streaming platform from Shen Yun, featuring world-class dance, past programs, and all original music. Masterclasses, behind the scenes, comedy, and more. Explore ShenYunCreations.com.